Hello friends, so this is our 13th lecture on self elusiveness and apology for poetry. In the last class we saw that the mixing of tragedy and comedy and poetry and uh, prose and verse, also heroical and, uh, and pastoral, there's nothing wrong because separated you enjoy in that case. You can also in the conjunction you cannot find any fault with that. And uh, Arcadia, you know, this is Arcadia. It's a long pastoral romance written by, uh, that was written by Sidney himself for, a, for entertaining his sister. But you can see he uses prose and verse in that. Then he takes one by one, he says, what's wrong with the, what is wrong with pastoral? What is wrong with the elegy? They teach us many lessons, especially if you, if you read the the general sympathy expressed in the long but uh, scholarly poem, scholarly elegy written by Thomas Gray, a, a, an elegy written in a country churchyard. You have got that sympathy, sympathy for that simple people that you develop in your mind. Now, in third one, he says, third is the iambic. So, first we saw the first is. Pastoral, there we find there's nothing wrong, not only that it teaches many things. And second is, you have seen the elegy, elegiac, elegy. Now third is the iambic, iambic, iambic. Iambic is direct hit on the faults of people. Direct hit, that is, you can see now what he said is that, Rubbing the gold mind. It rubs the gold mind, wounded mind. A sore, open sore. It rubs on it. Means it, it do, already it is paining, but you inflict more pain on it. And then what happens is you make the shame. You make the shame. Uh, shame you make uh, the shame public. For example, there is no question of any any the, any calm of clash or any kind of um, a cover up, nothing of that sort. Openly you attack the person who has done something wrong. That is iambic, the iambic. For example, suppose a student is coping the examination. If we did the iambic state, the invigilator will go to him, take his paper and, and show all the other people and say, see this man is coping in the examination. See that. So that is directly hitting that person. There's no question of decency in that. So I am being. That case is what's wrong with that? See, if a person has committed a mistake, it should be trumpeted or it should be made public. That is the opinion of uh, Sir, Sir Philip Sidney. You know, Philip Sidney was a very a fascinating personality, a brilliant and a fascinating personality. So his opinion, you should do take into consideration. So, so I am the, you cannot find fault with that. And the fourth is, is about the satire. What about the satire? Satire is of course, in a way you can say playful fooling. You know. Said playful, little playful is that. In I am it, there is no playfulness. It's you openly state that he has done a mistake or he has committed this fault. So, making shame the trumpet of villainy, that is the word, that is the words used in the essay. Making, we said the iambic, making shame the trumpet of villainy. So you, what happens in iambic is you, you directly hit him so that he feels shame. But in this, in satire it is not like that. Satire is uh, pointing out your follies and foibles and at the end, the person is reformed and we laugh. And he also laughs with us. This is all. And you can see he has quoted two or three Latin lines, Latin, from Perseus and also from Horace. I will write it on the board and as I told you, a free translation will be given to you and wherever possible, I shall connect it with the English, English words. So he says, Omne wafer visium ridenti. Omne Wafer, Vishim, 
ridden the omne wafer vishyam ridden the tangent amitko tangent tangent amitko so this is quoted from persius satyar 1 satyas 1 omne wafer vishyam ridden the tangent amitko then is this that the the, the poem here is Omne, omne means all. In a, in a satyr, what happens? That's what is it. In a satyr, what happens? Omne means all. You know, omnibus. Bus. The full form is bus is omnibus, not taxi. It's for all. Then uh, vishim. That means wise, wise, wises now. And uh, tangent, touch. You know, tangible. This is a tangible surface. This is a tangible surface. This you can touch and feel. Tangent. Tangent amico. Amico means friend. You have got amicable settlement. Amicable settlement. That is friendly settlement. Amicus jury. <laughs> A friendly jury. That's the meaning. Amicus. Amicable. He is an, he is an amicable person. That is. So, how many ways I could connect? One is, I am you. You know, this is without any knowledge of black you can connect. Because this is the origin. So omne all vices touched and then wafer uh, redundancy. That the, 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 I, I don't find any connection, any connected means uh, in etymologically you cannot connect it to any English word directly. Uh, if you know, if you have got the knowledge of Latin or uh, yes, then you can connect it. It's very good. No? Otherwise, the Translation is this, that is, he touches all the vices of a person. All the vices of a person he touches. Who? The satirist. If the satirist touches or he tells about all the vices of a person and makes his friend laugh. That's the meaning. Exact word by word translation sometimes may not be, you know, agree with the, uh, the original land because these are great poets they write in Latin idioms now. Latin idiom. And the Latin idioms, the idiom of any language you cannot directly translate into another language. Isn't it? For example, you know, in one of my classroom comedies, I gave an example that is kick the bucket. Then one of the students, I asked the teacher, asked the student, you may get sentence with that. And he said like this, the old man got angry in the bathroom and kicked the bucket. Actually, kick the bucket means to die. <laughs> see, the, see the difference. So, idioms we can. So, a Cicero, then a Horace, and um, such a Caesar, and such great, Augustus Caesar, and such great personalities, you know, they use Latin. But you cannot, uh, word by word translation, uh, you won't get the meaning. And like that, maybe some. Some idioms you, you will find, some idiomatic use of words and expressions you will find in poems also. So this is a poem, a satire one by Perseus. Perseus, a satirist. Perseus, the translation is, he touches all the vices of all the vices and he makes uh, his friends laugh. Means he speaks about the vices of the people and makes the friends laugh. It may be the friend's vices also. Now, at last, when he is aware of his vices, he laughs. Understand? So that can be like that. And then he says, while he says, makes a man laugh his folly. Laugh at himself. See that? You makes a man laugh at, at follies, weaknesses. And then he laughs. Himself and he love he makes others also love. That's how that's the meaning. And for that again he says from the same way, circum precordia ludit. Circum. Yeah, now this you can say circum precordia. Precordia ludit. See you you laugh and make others love. While what do you do? Circum. Means go around, circum, circular movement, circum, precordia, cordia in your heart. Means you are in, probing your inner feelings. 
your hearts. Ludit means play in a prelude. <coughs> Same as prelude. Prelude means uh, before the play actually. So before the play there is prelude. Understand? Ludere, that is Latin origin. So here he says uh, he touches who? The scientist touches all the vices and then makes his friend laugh while he goes around probing the inner feelings and habits of a person. Or while he goes around playing upon, see, playing upon the, his heart. His heart means his inner feelings and so on. See that? So this is what the Satyadis does. He touches all the vices of that person while and makes his friends laugh while he, the Satyadis, goes around and then plays with his heart. His heart means his inner feelings. And then, what is the result? The result is F. S. Ulbris. This is from Horace. These, the two, these lines are from Perseus. The, the next one is from Horace. Est ulubris. Est ulu et ulubris. Ulubris. Est, est ulubris. Animu, animus si non deficit eclus. Est ulubris animus si non deficit Acuous. This is from Horace. From Horace, it is uh, from his uh, uh, the from his uh, from his satire. Yes, accuse. Now, what is the what does that mean? See, all the three are connected. He as to Lubris. Lubris means a very an extinct city. City doesn't exist, but it is used as a metaphor for. Very difficult situation. Very difficult situation. You cannot move, you cannot go there, you cannot, if you go there, you will be starved like that. In that, that is the situation. As to Lupris, animals see non deficit accused. Now that is what, what that means. That means you, the translation is like this. This in that case, when he touches all the vices of the people and makes his friend laugh while he goes around playing with the heart of the person then whatever he loves we love in such a situation just is just means is is as ulubris even in even if even if you are in a city like ulubris which is very tough to live a place where it is very tough to live, it's fine. If you have the disposition, animus, soul, if you have got a disposition, you will, you will find happiness there also. <laughs> Did you hear that? So all the three lines are connected. Two of them are from Perseus, one is from one is from uh, uh, Horace. So the three put together, you can see the meaning. The, the meaning is, that is, uh, the, the general translation is like this he touches all the he means the satirist touches all the faults of of the people all the all the faults or vices of the people and makes his friend laugh while he that is the satirist goes around playing with the heart of the persons means the inner feelings and the emotions of the persons when you see this he laughs, you laugh, the audience laugh. In such a situation, when everybody is laughing, even if you are in Ulubris, if you have got a right disposition, you will also find the happiness. So what is the end of Satyar? End of Satyar is fooling and laughing. Playing with, playing with the follies and foibles of life. So what is wrong with the Satyar? That is what he said. Iambic, of course, you can see it is a direct attack. Making, make, uh, that is, iambic, what does, what does it do? It makes, it uh, making shame the trumpet of villainy. Making shame the trumpet of villainy. So, if you committed any villainy, 
if you are a villainous person, you will be put to shame by writing at the IRB. But in in this in this case, such a sound like that makes you laugh. It makes the person laugh. The guilty, the so-called you know, the guilty laugh. It makes all the people laugh. And you cannot remain but laughing if you have got the right uh, disposition of the mind. Even though you are an ulubris. Ulubris means a city that is extinct or a city or a situation. Send my question for a situation which is very, very difficult. So then, that is. Okay, then we have seen so far how many? One, first one we saw is past 12, isn't it? Past 12, and second one we saw is uh, after past 12 we saw. Uh, what is the next one? LG, yes. LG we saw. And third we saw, one by one like an advocate, he is arguing. Yes. Third we saw is, just now we saw, what is it? That is IMB. IMB means making, making the, the, making the trumpet, sorry, trumpet of villain. Shame the trumpet of making the, making shame the trumpet of the learning, that is I am it. And fourth one is Satya. And the fifth one is comedy. And what is comedy? Aristotle and Cicero together. They say that comedy is an imitation of the common errors of life. They are common errors of life. So you imitate that. Then that becomes comedy. So what's wrong with that? Like there also the end is laughter. You laugh with the characters, you laugh, and the audience laugh, all the people laugh. Even if a comedy is staged in Ulubris, you will laugh. That's it. So next time in the class, when you are talking to our friends, you can use this word Ulubris. Oh, we are in Ulubris. There is no current, no water, nothing else. That's so, so tough. So you can start using this kind of thing. Yes. I'll start with this. Now, you need not uh, bother about uh, you have already seen many characters like this, isn't it? Bottom, in the midst of a nice dream. Then you have got Malvolio, in Twelfth to Night. See that? You cannot but laugh now, the girling of Malvolio. Then you have got Sir Andrew, in the Malvolio, there itself you have got. See, you have got uh, the nurse, Julius Nurse. Funny person, uh, Julius Nurse you have. First up, Henry the Fourth, Part One and Part Two you have. Dogberry. In uh, much ado about nothing, you have got such characters. And again, you can see all point, you might be reading it uh, for your uh, PG. That is, you have got uh, Corvino, Corbaccio, then you have got uh, Mosca. <laughs> these are characters, comic, see that? Ortore, Ortore, these are characters. And Fox himself, all point himself. See, you find uh, this uh, comedy now. That comedy. When you go to classical, classical literature, you find talents. Talents. Talents, the writer of comedies, no? writer of comedies. So, talents, talents, yes, talents. You have got uh, characters like uh, Dimia, his in comedies, Dimia. You have got Dimia, Nato. Dimia. Nato you have, and then you have got uh, what is Thraso, Thraso and other Daos, Thraso, Daos, etc. Now, you are saying that Mosca is a parasite, and then you, you know, the, the people, uh, you are given a bad state, you are a parasite. So when you find another person like him behaving like the Yusha, he is a Mosca. The other three are legacy hunters. So you see, some people are running after inheritance. You know, he is a Corvino. Or he is a Corbaccio. Or he is a Ortore. <laughs> and the person is niggardly, you know. Huh? Then you can say, ah, he is, that is Dimina. Listen, if you are a vainglorious, then you are Gnato. Gnato. Tiecho. Gnato. Yes. And when you are um, uh, boasting, you have got Thrasso, right? Ah, he is like Thrasso. So instead of going to Roman characters, you have got, you have got your own English characters. 
is the most person. So other than the other is also cunning person, yago. Uh, he's the yago. So uh, here comes our yago person, a cunning person, double talk. So this is what happens. Now he says that this is very important in life, comedy. Why? Because in uh, in uh, in mathematics, see, you have got in geometry, you have oblique lines and straight lines. If you don't have oblique lines, how do you understand straight lines? Understand? In, my, in arithmetic, you have got odd numbers and even numbers. If you don't have, if you have only odd numbers, then how will you know even numbers? It's difficult. So you should have oblique, then and odd numbers. They are like a comedy. This is what we do. It's not like it for hurting people. It's for making fun. And then and afterwards, it's, you are holding a mirror. So just. Hamlet tells the players you know, in Meta Theatre that, that, that play, play within a play, play within a play is called Meta Theatre. Theatricality. <laughs> that is it. Meta Theatricality. That's play within a play. So he gives orders to the players hold the mirror up to nature. So, this, so that is what the comedians are doing. They're holding a mirror up to nature. Understand? So that also gives you, okay, if you, when what happens is that when you see somebody like you behaving, then you will feel like correctly yourself. So what is wrong with that? That's what is it. It has got a didactic effect or a function. And then sixth one is tragedy. Are you against tragedy? Yes, tragedy. High and excellence. For Aristotle, the supreme form of imitation, the high and excellent tragedy. When you see the sores are open, no tissue to cover, then what will happen? Then people see that, or when tyrants see the fall of Macbeth, they will be afraid to be tyrants. If you are a tyrant and watching, he is an example of Alexander Ferreo. Alexander Ferreo. Alexander Alexander I have got the my pen has gone on a strike. <laughs> yes. yes. Alexander of a tyrant, a cruel, merciless tyrant of Pharaoh, Alexander of Pharaoh, Pharaoh. It's a city in Greece. So, he's, uh, he was so cruel that he killed in cold blood, deliberately, his own kings, his own relatives, and also other people. But when he saw a tragedy, it is said that he wept. Tears trickled from his eyes. See that? So then he understood. Oh, what I have been doing is very, very cruel. I have been playing havoc upon my own people by killing them. So it is said that there was change in him. So how can you say that? Tragedy is the excellent reproduction of whatever. The presentation of whatever is most worthy to be learned. Tragedy is the excellent representation of whatever is worthy to be learned. Kings fear to be tyrants. And also, you come across, you see yourself in front of you, the uncertainty of life. Today you are a great general, tomorrow you are a king, day after tomorrow an emperor, next day you are a murderer. Macbeth. Today you are a general, some beautiful lady falls in love with you, you have a wonderful life, then you are a credulous man and you become a butcher. Uncertainty of life. King Lear. Uncertainty of life. 
Prince of Denmark, uncertainty of life everywhere. So if you see a tragedy, you will see tyrants will have a second thought whether they should continue to be like that. And also you will see how uncertain is our life. Your posting is uncertain, highly temporary and ephemeral. Then you will feel humility. You will, you will be humble. Understand? That is didactic purpose of that is one of the didactic purposes of tragedy. Of course, your mind will be purified. There will be clarity of minds. And that's when a tyrant he weeps. That means there is a there is there is clarity of mind. That is it. Understand? Now, when you, when you go through this, you will find pastoral, we have seen wrongdoing, etc. and also rewards and so on, you find, isn't it? And the patience, elegy, sympathy, iambic, attack on villainy, dialect, satire, playful fooling, comedy, see yourself, and then in, uh, when you see yourself, and if, if you cannot laugh, if you cannot, suppose you are unable to laugh, then he says, no, not unable to laugh. When you see people like Nato or Corvino, Corbuccio, Corbo, Corbaccio or Mosca, you feel like sending them to Pistrinum. Pistrinum. Even if you are doing like that, you do. Pistrinum. Pistrinum is a Roman mill. Name of the name, a Roman mill. So such a character should be handed over to the pristine, then we Roman mill, mill in mill, what will happen? You will be, what will happen is you will be cut into pieces, such people. You will have that feeling also. Understand? So when you see a Corbaccio, a Mosca, a Corvino, or a, or a Nato, or a Dimia, see, or uh, what other characters you have seen, that, uh, and that is the filthiness of people, filthiness. See Daos, then Flagnato, and uh, you have got Thraso, Thraso and so on. Such people, when you see they are filthiness of life personified. What will be your reaction? One is you want to change yourself, the second is send them to this place. Pistrinum, Pistrinum, a Roman mill. In the, you put them in the mill, and what will happen to them? Therefore, he says to the poet, the, to the poet, the haters, the poet whippers, the poet whippers, poet haters. But this brilliant person, this brilliant and fascinating personality that he served, Philip Sidney says, how can you attack poetry? It's all about the, the total effect of any poetry, any kind of poetry is teaching and delighting, so ending end of all limitation, all forms of limitation is pleasure, a rational pleasure, not irrational, a rational pleasure, understand? So, we will continue with this again because comparatively this is a long uh, essay and also he is uh, he's so brilliant and so vast no, the essay is so vast. Considering all aspects of poetry, all kinds. So, to take a few more, we will have to take a few more lectures on this. And uh, I hope that you are following me, you are enjoying my classes in that case. I will be, I am satisfied that if my labors, if, if my love's labors are lost, this is my labor is love's labor, means I have got a special love and liking and respect for student community. For somehow, I, from the right beginning, right from the beginning of my teaching career, even when I was a student, you know, I was, when I was aspiring to become a teacher, I had this in my mind, that love your students as yourself. <laughs> I am not boast, I am not, uh, just uh, what I should say, uh, telling, I mean, joking, but uh, this is a fact. 
from my lectures, you can understand it. No? Yes? So till then, we meet again. Till then, bye. Have a nice time and take it easy.